Next speaker uh, is uh, Dr. David Dake from uh, San Francisco. He's chief of the rheumatology section of the San Francisco VA, associate professor of medicine at UCSF, and he's director of the uh, UCSF training program. He's co-director of the US U UCSF lupus research. Uh, he's received his bachelor's medical and PhD at the University of Oregon. Uh, he was an intern resident and fellow at UCSF. He's got a number of awards, and um, he's been vice president of the ACR Research and Education Foundation. He's been president of the a uh, ACR uh, Research and Education Foundation also. And he's going to speak on the rheumatic manifestations of cancer. Good afternoon. Thank you, David. I want to thank all the organizers uh, for this meeting and for my invitation to it. I have to say I'm quite impressed um, with uh, the audience in general. This is a really a fine um, meeting uh, in terms of talks and also uh, with your uh, stick to itness with that beautiful uh, beach just on the other side of the wall. So and I r also recognize that I'm the only thing at this point standing between uh, you and a little bit of beach time. So I'm going to be um, efficient and um, talk to you today about um, uh, rheumatic manifestations of cancer. Um, I think um, this is something obviously that we have to think about all the time and as rheumatologists we're really the experts in um, assessing the level of immune activation in a, in a patient in terms of laboratory studies and clinical assessment. But obviously the problem is that the mechanisms of immune activation that occur in infectious disease, rheumatic disease, and neoplastic disease uh, are frequently the same mechanisms. And so the resulting laboratory abnormalities and clinical manifestations um, overlap. And uh, so uh, this can result obviously in, in systemic manifestations, uh, in some cases because a circulating tumor cell is, is uh, acting as an inflammatory cell, for example, a, a lymphoid cell secreting cytokines, uh, other inflammatory mediators, or the expressing a tumor antigen that then results in an immune response. Or in contrast, when uh, neoplasia occurs within tissue, then altered antigens within the tissue as a result of that proliferation activate an immune response locally within the tissue. So the manifestations uh, are legion, uh, can be very complicated, but in general um, they may be occur early before we see uh, evidence of cancer in a more typical way, in an organ specific way. Um, Importantly, uh, the first onset, though, in some cases of malignancy can be the rheumatic presentation, and those are the ones that we really have to focus on. And finally, um, sometimes we are, as we are aware, increasing the risk of malignancy in our own patients through our treatments. So my goals uh, in this afternoon talk are really to review um, some important perineoplastic syndromes that can mimic rheumatic disease. Unlike uh, several of the other great talks you've heard uh, today and, and uh, previously, I'm not going to really be talking too much about treatment uh, because uh, obviously that's once the cancer is diagnosed, the job of the oncologist. But many of these uh, perineoplastic manifestations are quite rare, um, not seen frequently. So um, my major goal in this regard is, is more of a review today to just highlight some of the key aspects that we sort of need to keep in mind. Uh, I'm going to touch on known associations between cancer and rheumatic disease and then provide an update on the current understanding of the relationship between our treatments and risk of cancer. So <clears throat> as I mentioned, um, we may see rheumatic disease as a result of indirect or direct involvement um, and so as well as very indirect that the perineoplastic process really is defined as um, <clears throat> no uh, appreciable direct effect of a tumor cell but as a result of circulating mediators, maybe endocrine, neurocrine, uh, et cetera. I'm going to really kind of take a top-down approach to go through some key manifestations, starting with the skin and then working down through the connective tissues, um, ending with more systemic disease, and then we'll, we'll get to uh, rheumatic uh, uh, therapies in relation to cancer. So starting with the skin. Um, one important group of clinical manifestations are really sclerodermatous changes. There really hasn't been any clear um